Welcome to Electron Online, and in order to be able to work with the curl of a vector, because that's what the differential form of Ampere's law indicates, right? It's the curl of B, and let's write the equation down. So it's the curl of B is equal to mu sub naught, which is the permeability of free space, times the current density J, and of course J by definition is equal to the current divided by the area through which it flows, which if it's circular, it would be pi r squared. Okay, so we need to know how to do that, how to take the curl of the vector B. And of course, that depends upon whether or not you do it in the Cartesian coordinate system, the, cylind the cylindrical coordinate system, or the spherical coordinate system. So as an example, we're going to do the Cartesian and the cylindrical coordinates. Actually, to tell the truth, this is the one you really want to know because, as you can see, if we have a current flowing in the Z direction, our B field will be in the plane uh, in the xy plane, which can be described as the magnitude mu sub naught i divided by 2 pi r in the theta direction. The theta direction, of course, is the circle direction in the plane, the xy plane. And so that would therefore be perfect that you do this in cylindrical coordinates. But since we're all kind of familiar with uh, Cartesian coordinates, let me show you what the curl of B looks like in Cartesian coordinates, and then we'll show you in cylindrical coordinates. And what you should also realize is that this is kind of like taking the cross product of two vectors. So remember, if you take the cross product of two vectors, and I'll write it down here real quick, so A cross B, that is equal to the determinant of the x unit vector, y unit vector, z unit vector, uh, that would be A sub x, A sub y, A sub z, which are the x, y, and z components of the vector A. And then you have B sub x, B sub y, B sub z, which are the x, y, z components of the B vector. And then the cross product will look as follows. This is equal to the unit vector x times, and if you block out this column and this row, you have these four elements left, and you will multiply those two and subtract when you multiply those two, so there would be A, y, B, z, minus a z b y and then we go minus because it's plus minus plus it alternates in sign like that so minus the y unit vector times a sub x b sub z a sub x b sub z because again you cross out this column and this row right here you have those four elements left so it's this times this minus this times this so minus a sub z b sub x and then plus the z unit vector times and so you block out this column, this row, you have those four elements left, so it's these two multiplied together minus those two multiplied together, so AX, uh, BY minus AY, BX. And I'm hoping that most of you watching this video say, yeah, I've seen that before, I know how to do that. So that's how you take the cross product of two vectors in Cartesian coordinates. Well, it turns out that this is no different than what you're doing over here, but instead of having this as a vector, we have what we call the del operator, and the del operator is kind of like a vector quantity, but it has the, the uh, x, y, and z components of the partial with respect to x, the partial derivative with respect to y, and the partial derivative with respect to z. So instead of the x, y, z components of A, we have this instead, but everything else looks exactly the same, so when you then execute, the curl of B in Cartesian coordinate system, you end up with this. You end up with equal to the x unit vector times, and you're going to multiply these two together minus those two. Basically, you're going to take the partial derivative of B sub z, so it's the partial derivative uh, with respect to y of B sub z minus the partial derivative with respect to z of B sub y. All right, so then you go minus this unit vector, y, times, so you cross out this column and this row, you have those four, those four elements left, so you take the partial with respect to x of b sub z minus the partial with respect to z of b sub x, and then plus this unit vector, z, times, so you cross out this column and this row, you have those four elements left, so you take the partial with respect to x of b sub y minus the partial with respect to y of b sub x. And that's how you take the curl of vector B in Cartesian coordinates. It looks just about like taking the cross product of two vectors. All right, so what does it look like now when you take the curl of B in cylindrical coordinates? Now notice the cylindrical, cylindrical coordinates looks a little bit different. You have the R, theta, and Z unit vectors, but in front of the R unit vector, you write 1 over R. In front of the Z unit vector, write 1 over R. And then here, in front of the B component in the theta direction, you write an R. Why? Well, that's a little complicated. 
And for that, we need to go and review how to convert from, so from Cartesian to cylindrical coordinates and how to convert from cylindrical or Cartesian to spherical coordinates. And that's where you can see where these numbers come from. So for now, just accept it. If you want to go back, then we'll have to review where, the, uh, where we make those uh, conversions. But anyway, now that we know what that looks like, let's go ahead and write the curl of B in cylindrical coordinates. So the curl of B in cylindrical coordinates will be equal to, so we have 1 over r, 1 over r times the r unit vector times, and I do the same, you cross out this column, you cross out this row, you're left with these four elements right here. So this will be equal to the partial with respect to theta times b sub z minus uh, the partial with respect to z of uh, r times b sub theta. So again, you go the partial derivative respect to theta of b sub z and the partial derivative of, uh, respect to z of r b theta. All right, now you go minus, because it always alternates in sign, plus, minus, plus, minus the theta unit vector times, you cross out this column and this row, now you have these four elements right here. So now what you do is you take the partial derivative of r with respect to b sub z minus the partial derivative of z with, of b sub r. So partial derivative with respect to r of b sub z minus the partial derivative with respect to z of b sub r. And then finally, since I'm running out of room here, I'll come over here, it'd be plus the z unit vector times, oh, not z unit vector, but one over r times the z unit vector, can't forget the one over r. And then of course, you cross out this column, this row, you have those four elements left right here. So it's the partial, <coughs> excuse me, the partial with respect to r of r b sub theta minus the partial with respect to theta of b sub r. Okay, and that would then be the, the, what we call the curl of the B vector, of the magnetic field vector, in cylindrical coordinates. So in the next video, we're going to take this and actually apply it to a real example, kind of like that, and see how we actually take the curl of the B field like this and how that fits into the, what we call the, um, the differential form of Ampere's law. And let me write that down somewhere so we have a reference. So we have the curl of B, and I forgot my cross symbol, so here we take the curl of B that has to equal mu sub naught times the current density, plus of course then we have the mu sub naught epsilon sub naught times the changing of the electric flux over time, but we're going to ignore that part, this is what we call the displacement current, which is not existent in a situation like this. So we'll take the first part of the Ampere's law and show you now how to take what we call the curl of the B vector in cylindrical coordinates, plug it in here and show that it's equal to mu sub naught times the current density. And that will be done in the next video if you are still following at this point.